Hey everyone, Captain Amazing here, and today we're going to go over my last round of 5v5 Grand Arena, so let's jump into it. My opponent is Mini Firulin with the Phoenix Latinos. He's 10.3 million GP overall, 6 in characters, 4.2 in ships. He has 26,000 Galactic War Battles. That's about 6 years. 6 years to my 2 years. A very massive account. He has 6 GLs. He's missing only 2. He has Maul, Starkiller. He, he pretty much uh, Third Sister. He has, he has a lot of the things. Most of them. So he does have Scythe. So he has a reliable Leviathan counter. Um, Profundity, Leviathan, Executor. Uh, all, all the ships. All the things. So a very tough opponent. A very tough opponent to my um i think i'm 7.7 .7 million with uh three gls and two gl ships so it's definitely a, a harder battle uh, my only advantage is he has a six star leviathan all right so let's look at his defenses he has third sister general grievous a star killer and that's a bosk bounty hunters on the bottom um so he does have that revive cron with his star killer that makes Vsys take an extra turn. So I was just looking at that Kron. Uh, it does change up the the battle a little because you just can't ignore her. If you kill someone, she's gonna uh, take a bonus turn and have her cooldowns reset. So it's it's a pretty annoying Kron. So I have to think about what I want to do there. And then Trench, Jabba, Malgus. Uh, the bottom one is Lord Vader. Lord Vader without Maul. So the first battle we're gonna go is CLS against Starkiller. So I decided to put uh, Ability Block on Vesis, and then I end up just taking her out right away. I was worried about Mara Jade, Mara Jade's turn meter, but I ended up uh, being able to kill her before she can take a turn. Now I'm just gonna do an AoE here, put it on one time speed, and like blah blah blah. <laughs> just do an AoE, not as much damage as I was hoping for. Uh, but I, I go in on pop, uh, Palpatine, they start taking some turns. A uh, Star Killer just dies, and then Juhani uh, goes down quickly. So this is why you want a good, tenacious, well-modded CLS team. Uh, here I have a General Grievous. I just they had really high relics on this team, pretty high relics. So I decided to go um, with Wampa, but I did throw a pretty good data cron on her that had some survivability on it. So somehow some protection and a little bit of defense, um, just to make this a more reliable counter just because I've, I've had some issues with at R5 um, against some of her matchups where it just doesn't go well. So I, I work out, um, I, I get stuck behind Droidica sadly because I brought General Grievous into health. So I'm stuck here. I'm just going to ramp and try to minimize my attacks on Droidica. So I have to kind of just wait it out for two turns. At this point, I'm confident they don't have the damage to get through my Wampa, but it's just a little bit of a waiting game, not a big deal. And this, the second I can take a turn, she goes down. So I'm effectively ramped at this point. Uh, you don't really ramp once you're going against the B1. You just you just keep hitting her, uh, hitting B1 as much as you can to bring those stacks down. And then after that, you just go straight for Grievous. So Wampa is a, a pretty effectively uh, ramped here. Uh, it could have she could have been ramped a lot more uh, but this is <clears throat> I, general grievous didn't ramp his health that much either so this was a really quick 69 banner win uh, this one was pretty interesting so i i have the character selection here to show that i have a gear 12 treya and nihilus against a full r7 um third sister team <clears throat> so uh, my chat didn't really think this was reliable at gear 12. They thought Treya would just go down immediately because she doesn't have enough health. Um, but I was, I, I wanted to give it a try. I, I was pretty confident that it could work. Um, so I ended up actually doing the counter with just gear 12, Nihilus, and, uh, and Treya and seeing what, what would happen. But I, I thought I would have a good shot here. I take out third sister. And at this point, I do my, my little bit of gloat. And telling uh, my chat they're negative Nancy's because uh, this is working absolutely beautiful. And <clears throat> I know I can easily take out um, Grand Inquisitor teams with uh, with my Treya. So at this point, I was really, really confident that I absolutely had the win. So I just have to work through Ninth Sister here. She's still pretty thick. 
but I was really happy with this turnout of what what happened because I'm it, this is so far it's looking like it can be some really beautiful banners and it's just it's been really really uh effective counter at low level i did message my um my opponent and let him know like hey you're this this team gets beat by gear 12 treya maybe you want to take it off defense uh because i i did talk to him uh, before as well before this match started uh so yeah perfect 65 banners uh so for this i went for the two shot malgus i didn't have a good health cron on him and i was a little worried that this could possibly time out because Bosk has some really good recovery. Um, and I was just worried that with, especially without the health cron that I normally have on Malgus that I had to use on Wampa, that maybe he didn't have the juice to dunk on Bosk and kill him. So I was a little worried. So I, I did bring in the Sith Assassin just to, just to have a little more um, oomph and, and possibly help me with like a, a, a critical kill, which it, it seems like it, it, it was a good choice. Um, she, she did help me take out Bosk, uh, but it is a lot less banners. And then maybe without Sith Assassin, maybe I wouldn't have had the the offense to to take out Bosk without um, without him recovering super quickly. So I don't, I don't regret it. I don't regret bringing in Sith Assassin. Um, and Malgus definitely can take out some bounty hunter teams really easily. But with boss lead, they just have so much health and protection recovery that it can lead to some, some pretty big issues of timeout possibilities. And I thought um, I could take out Zam right away, but I think she's modded for survivability and speed. Because when I dunked on her, she didn't even get out of protection, which is really not what I was expecting. So I do think she's modded for survivability, which was, uh, you know, just just a little worrisome for me. But this is going really well at this point. Um, I, I did play this almost on completely on auto. The only thing I did was uh, I just navigated where I wanted him to go. And then I played it manually a few times just when I thought it was like, like I take it off auto here um, just to make sure that I can, I don't waste my big hit. So uh, the, yeah, on Dengar. So if I would have had it on auto there, I would have used my big hit on Dengar. And then that could have possibly been an issue. Um, so I, that's why I did it that way just because I wanted to make sure I can get through it. But easy, 65 banners, it's still really clean. Um, not as high as I could have, but you know, uh, you get what you can get. So this SLKR, uh, if you get speed down on first order officer and not Hux, then it could mess with the turn order. But this time it went beautifully. I went um, SLKR, poke, first order officer, turn back, swipe, Hux, swipe. And that's the perfect turn order that you need to really counter um, a counter a Java and just make it a, a really easy and beautiful, um, beautiful, effective counter. So it, it went perfectly. I was really happy with it, um, especially since um, Bush died right away. Um, this time I'm, I'm left with just Embo and Java, which can be annoying, uh, can be annoying because Embo is just so survivable, uh, but this time uh, it was fine. Uh, the last time I had that uh, with Bushkron, Embo was really survivable, and I ended up killing Jabba before Bush, uh, before I killed or killing um, Jabba before I killed Embo. So this time it, it went well. There was really no issues here. I was I was really confident the whole time that this was a, a clean win. So here I have a Fennec against Lord Vader. There's no Maul here, so there's no threat of that. Um, but there was a little bit of surprises here. And I'm, I am still learning this this counter. It's a really difficult counter. I don't think I have my speeds exactly right. Uh, but it's it's a it's a very finicky <laughs> uh, counter. Uh, I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for that. But it's a it's a it's a really difficult counter for me. And sometimes I'll I'll win it, and sometimes. I won't, and it, it's just it's just a really difficult uh, process for me that I'm still learning. 
but I decided to take out Darth Vader first because he's the offensive threat other than Lord Vader. Um, I do disintegrate the Royal Guard, and then I, th I thought like, oh, I'll Tarkin and TIE Fighter, TIE Fighter Pilot are really weak, and I'm just going to go in and kick them one time and they'll die. Uh, so I put, a <clears throat> I put Armor Shred on Lord Vader. And I decide, okay, I'm, I, I was looking to see if I have any dots. I, I don't. Lord of Vader hasn't taken a turn because I'm running a bit of a turn meter train here. Uh, and then I, I do an AoE, or I do a mass assist, and he Tarkin didn't die. And that really surprised me. And I, I see he's still in the green. I'm like, what is going on here? Why is this guy so survivable? And then I do another one, and he still survives. So um, maybe in hindsight, I should have just gone straight for lord vader but i feel like um that that could have been a better choice because the those two aren't really a threat but i wasn't expecting tarkin to be so ridiculously thick as he was um and and my these characters are pretty juiced up too like fennec fennec is modded really well um really great speeds and, and damage so i i think this would have been a lot more reliable if I would have just gone straight for Lord Vader. Um, I did decide to take out the TIE Fighter Pilot because I figured at this point, this is this is cleanup material. So if I if I would have had Grief go first instead of Fennec, um, I could have healed right there and then maybe got the kill, um, but it, it did end up working out. So I did go with uh, Imperial Troopers and I am using, uh, I am using an irregular team right here because I didn't have anyone else that can uh that can cleanse for me so that's why i have this setup and i made a mistake right here uh because i didn't do the cleanse because when when i first came in he didn't do the aoe and i was so focused on lord vader i didn't know that i had all these dots on my troopers and i wasn't gaining turn meter um i still end up getting a reliable uh, I, I still end up going through Lord Vader and getting the win, uh, but it was a lot rougher than it had to be because I just didn't use the cleanse. So that was a waste to even bring him. But I, I should have, uh, that was a mistake on my end. I should have cleansed and then I could have ran a turn meter train. And I, I just didn't notice I had dots because I was hyper focused on Lord Vader. Here we have a um, Malgus against Ray. This is a really reliable, um, a really reliable counter. I always uh, double whirlwind Malak. He'll like suck someone, and that'll get my second whirlwind off, and I'll just kill him off. I did decided to do that instead of the alt because I didn't want Malak to heal, uh, and that's why I specifically specifically go whirlwind. Um, he'll he'll take someone down, and then whirlwind, and then that kills him right away. Uh, but this is a messy fight when you go when when you have. When Malgus has a good team with Darth Revan and Basilis Sean Fallen uh, and, and Malik, it's it's a really strong team, pretty much GL level. So it, it gets pretty messy here. If he if Malgus has a really weak team, even at R9, then you can get prop. I've gotten perfect banners on it with Ray. But when you have uh, when you have is his an all star team here, it becomes a lot less um perfect banners and more of just you're getting you're getting the kill and i don't have c i don't have uh jedi knight cal Kestis, so i have to go with what i have and what i have is ray for the reliable counter and i don't even have treya because i used her for third sister um i, I could darth malgus mirror or something but that's even messier and it, it can time out so i i time out on it sometimes uh, just because it takes so long to to cure to kill all the ads and it's pretty reliable where I'll have just Malgus in there but with um, I just didn't want to I didn't want to bother with it so I ended up uh, going with this and then uh, friggin Poe is healing Malgus every time so that's that's really annoying all right so at this point I, I'm I have no more tough teams to fight so I have Trench. He he put Trench on defense. So I just Star Killered it. This is really not a difficult match. Star Killer is is, is definitely um, an overkill on this one. But I decided to to use it because it was a Trench is actually believe it or not was the hardest team on different uh, on defense at this point. Uh, they did have Admiral Radis on defense with a Rogue One team. 
Uh, but I, I felt like I know Jedi, especially with Jedi Knight Luke League, can can reliably take that out. So I wanted to use that counter. Um, so that left me with this. So I, I have a, so this is his defense, a triple attacker executor, a really cheap, uh, a really cheap Radis, and a negotiator. Um, so I decided with Qui-Gon Jinn, I'm just going to uh, Jabba it because again, this is like, I, this is the defense he has. This is what he set. And I, I just underman with uh, with just four, four, um, four members of the Hut Cartel. So I don't, I don't go in with the fifth. But this is an absolute joke. I probably could have, uh, like, two, maybe even two manned it. But um, I don't. I'm not too worried on banners right now. So I decided I'm just gonna go in with Jabba and overkill this Qui Gon Jinn because it turns off his Omicron, and I, I don't have to worry about it. So it's an easy win. Uh, not <laughs> there's no thought process to this whatsoever. I just, I just, I could have played on auto if I wanted to. All right, so Jedi Knight Luke is a really strong counter for Radis. So what I do is I use that ability, give Jedi Knight Luke the um, his turn, I stun everyone, and then I f uh, focus down Admiral Radis. I Admiral Radis is always really thick, but Jedi Knight Luke hits really hard. And usually with one round of attacks, I'll be able to take him out. And I just have to get through Jin before she can bring him back. One counter attack and he's dead. And this is a, a perfect counter. So this, oh, for me, this is my most reliable counter for Radis. It always works so beautifully. So um, here we have uh, Sith Empire. So this is a really low t low um, <laughs> low uh, gear team. Uh, I didn't got death mark, so I ended up using Sith Empire here. Um, but this was this was a really easy fight. Uh, I like my my <laughs> my Sith Empire is R nine. It was uh, uh, really easy. So this I'm using a burner on the um, Executor triple attacker on purpose so that I can go in with Empire and have a much more reliable counter. So as you can see. Um, they most they use basics that the executor doesn't have an aoe it's just going to heal right here everyone else is going to use a basic it makes this counter ridiculously easy um if you're just looking for a easy win that's my recommendation of what to do uh it just if you just need the full clear to win and that your enemy can't get through your ships or or they can't get through anything um, then this is a way that you can do it. It is less banners, so it's not always the, the play to move because this could lose you the match. But going in and having a pretty much a guaranteed win against an executor with a two shot can sometimes be a win, especially if you're if you're in the lower brackets and your main ship is just executor and their main ship's ex executor and whoever clears the executor wins, then this easy two shot with the gear 12 Iden just cr like crazy, uh, makes this fight crazy easy. So no no issues there. Just I wanted the 100% uh, two shot and I, I was comfortable with my banners at this point. So this is a high relics negotiator. My malevolence pilots are all gear 12. So I, I usually can beat this really easily. Um, I'm the main thing is of course just killing Anakin's starship. Like I, I just have to focus, try to get a mark on Anakin's starship or take out their tank as quick as I can so I can start working on on Anakin. So I bring out the spy and I hope on to target Anakin. It ends up falling on Ahsoka, which is really bad RNG for me because she has retribution. So every time I attack her, she's attacking my tank. And my tank is a very survivable, but he just can't handle all that damage that Ahsoka was doing. So I, it brought him down to pretty much like a one shot. I would say I, I made a misplay here. I probably could have AoE'd killed him and brought in um, another Vulture Droid. Uh, and maybe that would have made the matchup a little differently. But I, I definitely could have played this a little better. But there was some bad RNG here. Uh, I bring in a, a, an additional um, reinforcement because uh, 
Plo Koon's right about to die. And yep, there he goes. Um, and he had a bomb on him. So the second he took a turn, he would have died anyways. So, and then they get their AOE and I end up losing. So I go with uh, my own negotiator against the Radis. Uh, it's just, <clears throat> this is a really low gear Radis as well. Uh, my negotiator, it, like, is Anakin's only gear 12 as well. I, I really do need to work on my relics. I'm, I plan on doing that after um, I get my uh, my Jedi Master Luke built up. But I decide, you know, this is this is just what I have to do. It's, it's worked for me, but now that I'm in Kyber, it's, it, they're starting to fall a little weaker. So I need to get their relics up, and, and I've been kind of holding off on it. Uh, so this counter was really reliable. There's, I didn't have anything really to worry about here. Um, pretty low gear. It's a pretty weak ship. So I'm trying to time it out so that I can bring Plo and get some of my banners back, pump turn meter, and then I plan on just killing this resistance pilot. He, uh, he steals one banner on the way out. But uh, all in all, uh, really good, good banners on that counter. And then I bring in uh, the finalizer just to, to take out this negotiator. Uh, so I'll have two two shots on uh, ships, which isn't isn't great. I'm not I'm not super enthused about it or anything. Um, but I got it, this is you know spoiler alert. I did get the full clear, so I was happy with that, um, especially with how uh, difficult uh, Kyber has been for just having uh, when I first got in two GLs, and now I have three and two GL ships. So. Uh, this I'm getting the full clear now is 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 a huge benefit to me. So I'm I'm really happy with um, my performance here and, and what especially on ground what happened. Only one drop battle on uh, Lord Vader. So all in all, uh, and it, it wasn't a cakewalk defense. This was a a full on uh, actual defense with a, a very good uh, opponent. So I I was very happy with my opponents. Uh, my performance this grand arena uh just just getting the full clear and this is why people hate negotiators this is running at one and a half speeds and it's still just it goes on and on and on like uh, now i'm in the game let's see how i did all right so i did win <laughs> um pretty pretty happy with that so my opponent actually didn't attack so i won with the 1760 banners and my opponent didn't even attack so all in all, um, I think pretty lucky. This was an absolute massive account. And I think if they really wanted to, uh, my main defense of um, of my executor, triple counter, and Leviathan, even at seven stars and the best uh, defense setup, uh, probably wouldn't have been enough to hold him off to win. You never know. Sometimes you can get really good RNG um, on ship's defense and they can't get through. Uh, but this was an absolute massive, massive account. And I think if he really wanted to, he probably could have got the full clear and a win. Thanks for watching my uh, Grand Arena recap. If you enjoy this content, go ahead and like and subscribe. Uh, if you have anything to say about it or have different things that you would have done, please let me know in the comments. Otherwise, thanks for watching my video. Take care.